You want to go first, Andrew? Yeah, well, I'll just say, you know, hi to everybody. I think we know everybody here, uh, but uh, the, uh, you know, I'm looking forward to tonight, Andrew Mercier, the uh, NDP MLA for Langley on the traditional territory of the Kwantlen, Katsi, Matsky, and Semiamu speaking peoples. And I think it's important we acknowledge that. Um, and uh, we're going to just have a nice uh, evening with Jenny here from 211 to explain uh, the services that 211, which is a great organization that's you know, funded by United Way and all of their generous donors and funding streams uh, to help navigate government and community services. And right now we're obviously at a time where, where demands on these types of services because of COVID-19 are way, way up. Um, and so the more uh, information people have to navigate that, I think the better. Thank you, Andrew, and thank you for acknowledging the territories. Uh, I want to welcome you tonight, and I want to thank Jenny for joining us uh, from 211, and um, thank you for joining both Andrew and I. Um, I'm Megan Dykeman, the MLA for Langley East. We felt that it was very important uh, to hold this event because I, I have to say that uh, learning about what 211 has to offer really left me quite surprised. Uh, I had no idea that there were all these services available. I had no idea that uh, it had such a long length, uh, sort of a, a, like such a wide array of services that were being offered to people through this hub. So I'm really excited to be able to share uh, this presentation with uh, my colleague and friend Andrew for everybody and we are recording it so we'll be able to share it out. And I will then hand it off to Jenny to get started. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me today to speak. Um, so I just um, I just wanted to acknowledge that I'm joining you today from the unceded traditional and ancestral territories of the Musqueam, Squamish, and Tsleil-Waututh. So BC 211 is located in downtown Vancouver, uh, but we've been operating remotely since the start of the COVID-19 pandemic. I'm just going to share my screen and start a presentation with you. Um, the presentation I have for you today is divided into three parts. There's an introduction to the 211 service. Um, there's a bit more about BC 211, the organization uh, that runs the 211 service in British Columbia. And then if we have time, I can show you a sneak peek of our, webs our new website uh, and also conduct a website ser search with you. Uh, if you have any questions, um, I'm okay with you asking them along the way, but you can also write them in the chat and I'll check in um, when I'm done the, the second part of the presentation. So it'll just take me a second to share my screen. So to get started, I'd like to share with you a 30 second uh, public service announcement that recently aired. It was part of a national awareness campaign for the 211 service in Canada. Um, so I'll play it, it's 30 seconds long and uh, hopefully the audio is working. Just one second. Are you low on food? Struggling to pay the bills? Overwhelmed by life's challenges? When you need support, but don't know where to turn, just dial 211. 211 connects you to the programs or services near you. 211, how can I help you? 211, help starts here. So what I really like about that uh, 30 second public service announcement is that tagline help starts here. And that's really what we are. Um, we are a service that um, callers call, uh, uh, our callers know they need help, but they may not know uh, where to start or what it's even available to them. And so we are that front door to social government and community services. Um, and so our service 211 is free, it's confidential. Um, you can call in and we, uh, we have access to interpretation in, in over 150 languages and the service is available 24-7. So 
So how do you contact 211 in British Columbia? Well, in British Columbia, you can call 211, you could text 211. Uh, from our website, you can access a web chat option, and you can always email help at bc211.ca. Uh, we also have a website that features our online database, and that database is our full database of over 15,000 resource records. So that includes information on programs and services available uh, within British Columbia. Um, now, 2020 was a big, big year for 211, and uh, 211 became accessible all across Canada. So anyone across Canada can dial 211 24 7. Um, now, region to region, there are other methods to contact. So I've outlined what's available in BC. If you ever needed to know um, what was available in another region, you could go to the 211.ca website, and that lists all the contact information for each of the areas across Canada. Uh, interestingly, uh, 211 is actually available throughout most of North America. It's in the US as well. Um, it's, uh, it's uh, as Megan was saying, you know, unfortunately, uh, we're still trying to get word out about the service. It's such a great service. Um, and we're in that process of trying to get word out and word and recognition. So what happens when you dial 211? Well, one of our navigators will answer. Our navigators are highly skilled and trained. Uh, they'll listen to the caller's circumstance and they'll identify the most appropriate services to address the caller's needs. Uh, then the navigator will provide them with information on that organization or service or program and how to contact those programs. One of the really great things about the 211 service that a lot of people don't know is that when you call or text, uh, if you provide your email address or consent to being um, uh, to a, a return text, our navigator will send you a follow up with all a list of all the resources that were discussed um, in, during your conversation. Uh, and this is like such a great tool. A lot of our callers are you know, in a very emotional state, um, they're in distress. And so uh, just that ability you know, to be in the moment and in that conversation, not have to take notes and then receive that follow up with all the detail in it in an email form or a text um, is just so helpful to our callers. So again, when people are calling, our navigators, um, off, the callers often present with a symptom. And so it's really our navigator's role to have a conversation with the caller and really determine uh, what that caller's needs are. So someone might be calling and saying, you know, uh, can I have information about um, low cost food or food banks? Um, and and if, if it, um, you know, if the caller is receptive, our navigator might have a conversation and try to, you know, ask some questions and figure out, you know, um, are there other issues at hand? Like, is there a lack of employment issue? And that navigator then can provide resources on employment as well. So what can you call 211 about? Well, basically the whole spectrum of social government and community services. Um, so you see here, there's a big list, but everything from housing to homelessness, uh, senior services, newcomer supports, uh, mental health resources, counseling, um, really that whole spectrum. 211 is part of the N11 family. And what I mean by N11 are the, the numbers like 911, 811, and 311. So everyone knows 911 is for emergencies. Uh, 811, uh, is for health related questions. Uh, and now that's a um, household number <laughs> that everyone knows because of the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, and some municipalities have 311, which um, you can call for municipal services. So we're really working to that level of recognition. So here are just some examples of reasons to call 211. So perhaps um, the caller might have an aging parent who needs help, and because of COVID-19, they haven't been able they haven't been able to visit um, their their adult uh, their parent if they're out of town, uh, and they know that parent might need help with grocery delivery or prescription delivery. Uh, that person could call 211, uh, and in this case, we would connect them with the Safe Seniors Strong Communities program, which I'll mention a bit later in my talk. Another reason to call is maybe you're worried about putting food on your family's table. Maybe you've lost a job or there's other circumstances. 
Uh, or maybe you've run into some legal trouble and you need legal advice, but you have no idea how to access it and you don't know if you can afford it. Those are all good reasons to call 211. So I only started with uh, BC211 back in mid-October of 2020. Uh, and I've just been so impressed with the organization since starting with them. Um, and I've had um, in my training and, um, and over the last few months of getting to know the service better, um, I've had the privilege of listening in on some calls. And all our calls are completely confidential, um, but I can share with you kind of like um, some of the topics that are explored in the calls or some scenarios that, um, that do come up. So a lot of our callers are calling on behalf of someone we do have many callers who are calling for their needs for themselves, but a lot of people are concerned about loved ones or another family member or a neighbor. And so they're calling to see what services are out there. Um, some examples I can give you are, you know, a mother calling of, um, really concerned about her son who's in the hospital because of an overdose. And the mom is, or the mom is just desperate to get her son help, but their relationship is strained. And so she's calling 211 for resources. Now, our navigators are really highly skilled, so they're able to offer some emotional support. You know, um, in, this, in this call, I, I listened to our navigator, it was one of our senior navigators answering, and that navigator, you know, was able to offer information because um, our navigators, a lot of them have social work backgrounds. She, you know, she was able to say and comfort the mother, um, you know, saying that in the hospital system, most likely your son will be put in touch with a social worker. Um, you know, our navigator can provide addiction um, resources or mental health resources, but our navigators are super skilled and they're able to, if, you know, if the conversation's going a certain way, they can also offer support to the caller. So in this circumstance, there's lots of support out there uh, for family members who have, um, or for families who have members with addiction problems. So, um, you know, the navigator would just say, hey, are you open to getting support as well? And then provide information on those resources. Um, another example would be um, um, an adult calling in regards to a sibling who had been financially supported by their parent um, and the parent had passed away. And so this um, family was looking for information on, um, you know, they were trying to help out the sibling, but they realized this wasn't going to be sustainable in the long run. So they were exploring what support would be available out there for them. All great reasons to call 211. Um, so I'm going to show you a, uh, this is another public services announcement. This is an older one, um, but I'd like to show it to you because it shows you um, how a call might start. Um, so this is uh, from a few years ago. It was a series of three stories. Um, and this recently aired, we re uh, aired a few of these uh, recently in a campaign on Vancouver Island, working with the United Way of Greater Victoria. So I'll just play that. Might, um, it's an example of how a call might start. 211, how can I help you? Hi, I'm really worried about my sister. She doesn't leave her house much. She doesn't even come to our family things. I barely see her smile anymore. Can you tell me a bit more about the situation? I think her husband might be, I, I don't know. Whenever he's around, she's nervous, like she doesn't want to make a mistake. Well, do you think that he might be hurting her? I think so. Okay, let's figure out how we can help your sister. So I really like that example because it really shows how from that point the navigator then helps the caller problem solve uh, and provides resources from that point. Um, so I also wanted to mention it's worth mentioning what we don't do. So we don't um, so we don't provide caseworker book appointments for any callers. Um, so we don't collect personal information that would then um, allow us to book appointments on their behalf. Um, we don't provide counseling directly. We connect the caller to counseling services in their community. Um, 211 is not a crisis line. However, all of our staff are trained to handle crisis situations. So as you can imagine, the COVID-19 pandemic has had 
a big impact on 211. And it's really highlighted the value of 211 and put many people across Canada in the need of, uh, in the position of needing help for the first time in their lives. Now, this is a national statistic, but across Canada, um, uh, 211's experienced a 30% increase in call volume from March to December of 2020. Uh, 2020 was a big year uh, because in March of 2020, uh, the BC Ministry of Health and United Way launched Safe Senior Strong Communities. Uh, it's a program I'll talk a little bit more about later. Um, and with that funding also supported the expansion of 211 across British Columbia. So we weren't up to March 2020, we weren't available all throughout British Columbia. We were, um, and so, um, so in this past year, we've gone province wide. Also, by the end of 2020, um, the, uh, with federal funding, the United Way's, Way was able to offer the 211 service across Canada. So now it's available coast to coast to coast. So I thought I'd share with you some British Columbia statistics uh, to give you an, a, a sense of how, um, of how busy the service is in British Columbia. So these are all stats from 2020. So last year, we uh, received approximately 58,000 requests for information and referral. That, uh, that number includes calls, texts, web chat, and emails combined. And in British Columbia, it was a 17% increase over 2019. Um, now on our website, uh, you can do self-serve database searches and we had over 73,000 database searches uh, that were conducted on our website. That's a 10% increase from 2019. And those aren't the searches that are happening behind the scenes um, by our navigators in the system. These are all people visiting the website searching. Um, and so those people might be searching for services for themselves. They might be curious about the 211 service and start there and then call our number once they're comfortable. Uh, or it could be agencies helping clients as well find resources. So interesting, the top reasons for calls uh, still remains the same. So our, in British Columbia, now it does change region to region, but um, pretty much throughout um, British Columbia, the main reason is housing and homelessness. That's the majority of calls. Uh, two is health and three is income and financial assistance. So in that health bracket, uh, we have things like um, COVID-19 related questions. So we might be referring a caller to the 811 service, or we might be referring them to the benefits and relief programs available. Um, we got a, a lot of calls in that health category uh, regarding dental care and um, uh, affordable dental care. Also home, home support would be in that category. Oh, so I have another video from that, um, or another uh, PSA from that campaign. Um, and here, this is another example of how a call to our number might start. 211, how can I help you? I lost my job in the last round of layoffs. And then my husband, he's just, he's really sick. And we've had to place him in assisted living. I don't know how we're going to pay for any of this. How long have you been off work? About nine months. Our savings are nearly gone. I just feel like everything is coming apart. We're gonna figure this out together, okay? So here, I just wanted to share with you a testimonial from a caller that we received um, this past year. Uh, and this really um, refers back to um, when I mentioned that if a caller provides their email address, um, that the navigator can follow up with a list of the resources. So in case the person wasn't taking notes, you know, some people don't have a pen on hand when they're calling, um, you get that email of detailed information to work from. So this person's, you know, saying it's so touching to see how much work you put in, put in on behalf of my daughter and I. And, you know, our navigators will spend a lot of time on the call depending on um, the needs of that call. Um, so but we do, sometimes we do have wait times, uh, but it's really because our navigators are just doing the best they can to, keep, to help each caller. So often there'll be no uh, wait time, 
Uh, sometimes it might be a couple minutes and there's some periods like overnight where um, a caller might have to wait a, quite a few minutes to get to get to a navigator on the other line and that is all because you know each call coming in we don't know uh, how much attention and detail and time the navigator will take depending on the issues that present. So I was mentioning throughout that presentation a little bit about safe seniors and strong communities and I just wanted to mention a bit more about that program here. So if you can think back to March 2020, the start of the uh, COVID-19 pandemic, there was a lot of fear, uh, isolation, um, and a lot of support systems for uh, seniors across the province stopped. Um, you know, people were told not to travel out of the region, not to visit relatives, and so there was a real need for our seniors for more support. So in response, the United Way and the BC Ministry of Health launched the program Safe Seniors Strong Communities. So what the program is, is that seniors 65 and older can request volunteer help with grocery shopping, uh, meal preparation, prescription pickup, and friendly check-in calls. Uh, and BC211 was the registration point for this program. So you could to sign up, whether you are a senior wanting to participate or a volunteer wanting to help out, you can dial 211 to sign up or sign up from our website. There's an online form to fill out. Now the Safe Senior Strong Communities program, um, once you sign up for that, your information is shared with the better at home agencies across British Columbia who match local volunteers with seniors who need help. And so um, um, the, so the program follows all of the safety rules and the program differs from region to region based on the better at home services provided from region to region. So to give you an idea of how popular this program was, uh, in the first six months of the program, so it launched, launched um, last March, for six months, uh, and these were signups just through 211, we had over 4,700 4, seniors sign up via 211 and over 6,700 volunteers sign up to be part of the program. Um, 77% of, of the volunteers were between 20 and 50 years old and the average age was 36 of our volunteers. I, now I looked up the Better at Home Agency's service provider for the Langley region and I believe the service provider for your region is Langley Seniors Resources, Resources Society uh, and it looks like they provide a range of services. So friendly visiting, which I'm assuming now is online, transportation, light housekeeping and grocery shopping. So that was about the 211 service. Uh, and now I just wanna to speak to you a bit about BC211, the organization behind the service. So BC211 is part of a North American network of 211 service providers. In Canada, 211 is overseen by the United Way and managed regionally by a network of 211 service providers. Uh, in British Columbia, it's BC211. Uh, so who are we? Well, we are a Vancouver-based nonprofit and proud United Way partner. Uh, we our organization started way back in 1953 and evolved over the years. And in 2010, we became uh, BC 211. So this uh, just last month, we um, celebrated 11 years of providing the, the 211 service. Now, uh, I like to include this picture in the presentations because it's of the Red Book and a lot of um, in the presentations I give, a lot of people are familiar from the Red Book from years ago. So for many, many years, this publication was published and it's a, it was a listing, basically a directory of all the social services uh, within the Lower Mainland. And this publication evolved over the years and it evolved into our online database. Um, so our online database accessible from our website has all the, all the listings. So what is our goal? Well, our goal really is to strengthen communities by connecting people to the help they need. Uh, and we work, you know, we work with individuals calling our service. We work with um, uh, service agencies and um, it's a whole network of people working together to make sure people get the help they need. 
Um, now, you might be interested to find out that in addition to 211 British Columbia, we also manage several other helplines. So we manage 211 for British Columbia, Saskatchewan, as well as Yukon, Victim Link BC and Yukon, the Gambling Support Line for British Columbia, Alcohol and Drug Information and Referral Service, Youth Against Violence Line, we do the registration for the Safe Seniors and Strong Communities Program, and we also have a shelter and street helpline. And so, um, you know, when you're calling, our navigators have been trained to answer all these lines. Um, and so you're really in good hands. So how do we do it? Well, behind the scenes, uh, and what I found really interesting when I started to work for BC211 is, of course, I knew there would be navigators answering the phone. So that's our information and referral team uh, and our resource navigators um, answer the phones. Now, what I didn't really realize is that there is a whole research and publication team. Now, this is the team updating the records and maintaining them. Um, so remember, I mentioned that database of 15,000, over the 15,000 records of services and programs in throughout British Columbia. Well, that's the team that makes sure um, that the listings we're including meet the criteria involved uh, and also try to update that information frequently. Another interesting thing about our organization is that we do have um, a data analysis uh, piece to our organization. So our, all of our services are completely confidential, but we are able to compile aggregated data. So that means data with no personal information attached to it. Uh, and this gets used in many ways, but one of the more significant ways is that um, we are able to identify unmet needs for certain regions. So we track, you know, when a caller calls and they're asking for resources of a certain topic and we can't find anything in their region that matches that topic. Well, we track that information uh, and then with our partners, we're able to, um, you know, make recommendations uh, on, on service, service needs for various regions. Um, the other thing, BC211 is AIRS accredited and AIRS stands for the Alliance for Information and Referral Systems. And so we've been accredited since 2008. We meet very high international standards and we're going through the reaccreditation process right now. Um, so part of that is what we need to meet international standards on call response times, privacy and confidentiality, and quality and accuracy of our, re of our records and our database. So um, possibly you work for an organization that you think should be listed in our database. So please check out our database. See if, you're, see if your organization's listed. Uh, if it isn't, you can always submit. Uh, we have a listing criteria on our website and you can make recommendations or if a listing needs updating, please send us updates. Uh, and that can be emailed to updates at bc211.ca. Um, you know, we're really excited. We've been working on this new website behind the scenes. And so that's what's coming up next. We hope to launch a new, well, we hope we will be launching a new website in the coming weeks. Um, and also the goals that we are working on moving forward is just building awareness of the 211 service. It's such a great service. And since I started working there, I just can't believe, you know, not more people know about it. Um, especially since it is a service that's available across most of North America. And so I encourage you uh, to help us get word out. Um, you know, maybe it comes up in conversation at work, or maybe, you know, you know, a, a friend, a family member that maybe, um, you know, could explore resources in their area. Please recommend 211 as a starting point uh, to getting connected for programs and services. Um, so I'm just going to stop sharing my screen and I can answer any questions you have now. Um, and if you would like, I could walk you through uh, what a website search looks like. So let me just stop sharing. Did anyone have any questions at this point? Hi, are we uh, just jumping in? Sure. Okay, yeah. Perfect. Thank you, Jenny, so much for your presentation. It's really wonderful that you can be here with us. 
lots of important stuff going on here. Um, I, I'm curious when we're looking at the 30% increase of call volumes um, from 19, uh, 2019, look at it's COVID, <laughs> 1999, uh, 2019 to uh, um, 2020, how, are we seeing where that spike is coming from, where those needs are being pointed to? Did uh, in the aggregated data, is it showing us what has perpetuated those call increases? Well, 30% um, is the stat across Canada. So I can't speak to all the 211s across Canada, the whole network. Sure. Um, in British Columbia, it's interesting. We can see, you know, our top three categories have stayed the same. Okay, the housing, health, and uh, increase of financial assistance. Yes, um, but there is a um, there is a change within those. So we had a drop actually in homeless and um, housing calls, and we believe that's attributed to um, because of the pandemic and just the restrictions that were put in place. And so there just there wasn't that searching for um, housing needs at that time. Um, so we, so yeah, sorry. So I was just, I, what I, I'm really, my heart's interest in the lower mainland, right? And targeting mm -hmm. our region here and, and uh, how, how we are seeing um, a potentially youth increasing calling and if they're part of that increase uh, access and are they aware of it? I know we have a, a youth hub and a Langley uh, youth network that has created a little access card and that this would just be such a great program be attached to that if it's not already so that our kiddos have that extra outreach because of the services you're providing are quite exceptional um, even if uh, a youth gets a live voice right mm -hmm. and that point of connection and if it holds yeah. that that youth you know for 15 minutes that 15 minutes is the difference between one decision to another yeah and um, uh, so i'd just be curious of where that intersection is um, Obviously, you might not be able to answer that today and how we can get that attached maybe to the hub and those organizations and maybe through Andrew and, and Megan that can be accomplished. Sure, I'd, if we could, um, if you have specific questions, I can, we can continue the conversation um, out, outside of this presentation in terms of certain stuff, if you want certain stats pulled up and stuff, I can look into that. I just probably, I don't have access to all my, yeah, all my stats. Right. That. Uh -huh. that, that's good. Thank you, Jenny. Um, I will say our navigators, because you mentioned a bit about it, our navigators are really good at providing emotional support. So sometimes we have callers who have addiction issues and, um, you know, it, it could be the middle of the night and they're just trying to get through a craving. And so sometimes the navigator's role is just helping that caller ride an emotional wave and offering suggestions and helping problem solve. Um, and it's just spending time with that caller. So it, it, um, it really, 211 is a wonderful service. It, it serves so many needs in the community. Like it's, our main goal is connecting people to the resources already in place. Um, but we are there to provide that emotional support in the moment um, when someone might be having trouble. Awesome, wonderful, thank you. I have a question. Thank you. Um, this is wonderful. This is very, very helpful. Um, learning more about 211. I was familiar with 211. I guess since the pandemic, and even before the pandemic, um, reaching isolated seniors was a, a, a huge concern and it is still a, a concern. So I guess I guess it's about getting the word out about 211 in all that it does offer and especially with the navigating because I think navigating systems or resources or you know sometimes you feel like oh I'm taking up too much time this is an important. So when you're when you're taking a care if you're when you're taking care of a senior that has dementia and all of a sudden they're in an episode in the middle of the night, right? And you're like, okay, I'm going to weigh this out. I'm going to weigh this out. Um, I think the, this is a reason why it's important to be able to go, okay, I can walk away into a room and go, you know, call 211 and, you know, get some, um, 
some, it, I think it's even that security piece, right? Um, and I don't think people know or have enough resources around certain things that seniors have to deal with, right? And caregivers of seniors, right? So um, for me, it's how, I, and you did, re, you did mention the Langley Resource Society, which is wonderful, but we have such a, a large contingency of seniors as um, Andrew and Megan are well aware and Andrew, especially down here in the city, there's, there's a lot, right? And there's a lot of isolated seniors. And I think almost in every organization that I belong to or volunteer in, it's always that how do we reach not just vulnerable, isolated seniors, but, you know, people struggling with mental health and just wanting to stay in that, you know, in that place and um, a caregiver being with that person that's dealing with mental health. Um, so I guess the piece for me is um, how do we get this out to seniors? Like through what other means can we get this out to caregivers and seniors and what other avenues can we use? Sure, well, I can just say on the 211 side, we have put a lot of work um, over the past six months into getting word out, both on a national level. So on a national level, um, the United Way Sans Trade um, has built a whole awareness campaign and we've been, and it's been across Canada and also with support from each of the regions. Um, and then on a local level, we're also trying to get word, word out. Um, and so part of my role, so, um, so I was hired mid-October as the community engagement coordinator. And part of my, my role is, is just doing that, you know, getting out to these talks, get, trying to get word out, um, looking for, um, you know, um, partnerships where available to cross-promote that type of thing. Uh, and so I welcome ideas. You can always send us ideas to info, um, to info at uh, bc211.ca. Uh, ideas would be great. I know uh, on the island, um, United Way Greater Victoria shared with me that they had produced magnets and then they had them placed in social housing when social housing was opening. And so when the residents moved in, they had this magnet for the 211 service. Like that's a, such a fantastic, amazing idea. So anything like that, I welcome conversation about, yeah. I love the idea of magnets and also maybe little cards for senior housing that they can put on their fridge that gives them that point of contact of how, how to get in maybe all, uh, online as well as through telephone because our seniors are are, are quite savvy and can get on that technology piece and, and maybe they need to just do their own little research before getting on the phone and the phone is a good point of access for crisis or just having someone be present like you mentioned earlier and Andrew that might be a neat little venture to to take through the city um, into some of those um, senior housing complexes that we have there um, certainly we have a lot of need without a doubt yeah and, and just to Rosemary's point, like there's a lot of seniors in Langley City, and there's a lot of seniors who live alone, uh, you know, in Langley City and face social isolation and, and a whole range of other issues. But, you know, just to kind of to um, respond to something you said there, Rosemary and, uh, and uh, Jenny about getting out there and building awareness. I think, you know, just sitting here and listening to all of this right now in my role, and I know Megan will feel the same way, I can tell you that I will definitely be a champion of, of this service and look for ways as we begin to open up and are able to have events and that kind of thing and whatnot and do outreach to, to make sure that we're promoting this from our offices as a part of it. Because I can tell you, when you showed the red book there, I used to volunteer at the Crisis Center uh, on East Broadway in Vancouver um, about 15 years ago. The, the red book is the first thing we'd go to for folks in crisis to try to refer them to services, right? So. So that's, um, you know, that's really heartening and it's heartening to, to know that, you know, the navigators aren't just trying to get people off the phone and move on to the next, to the next issue, but they're looking at it holistically in a kind of emotionally aware way. But, but I think it's really going to be incumbent as well on just Megan and I on championing, championing this and making sure that we're getting out there with it. Is there a way that um, I know that a lot of seniors they love their, their love their tactile. They love to be able to read the newspaper, right? So if there's any way that
that you could even put a, you know, like a, an ad, I don't know how that can work, but an ad of two on one and what it entails, right? I just, uh, even that another avenue of, of advertising in another way that they can, you know, or even in, in shopping centers that they go to, like no frills, right? A lot of seniors, um, that, that's a shopping cent, uh, place that they go to, right? So it's just being creative in um, finding ways to, to communicate with seniors. And, and like you said, Andrew, I think all of us that are sitting on this call will be advocates for um, the information that Jenny has provided tonight, which is wonderful. And Rosemary, just to, to, um, to mention, uh, we do, so a lot of our advertising that we do do are in local publications geared towards Caesar, seniors. So often there'll be a special issue, um, you know, active living, that type of thing. Um, and, and we do often participate in those opportunities. I was thinking one of, one of the things that's so unfortunate is, is one of the casualties of COVID was the welcome wagon, which would have been a great um, way to get that out to people. Um, I'm wondering if there's been any thought to the packages they give you when you give birth in the hospitals. They'd always give you an envelope with uh, all the you know resources and when you should follow up and get a C-section, like extra bandages. But actually having the two-in-one in there, I, I know... There are lots of people who they go home with a baby and those first few weeks are tough. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, you're, you don't know, and nobody really tells you what to expect. Like, you, you know, they, they don't tell you that you're probably going to be in tears after the first 10 days when everything starts to shift and, and like that resource, especially for um, single parents going home alone or, or people who are married, but their families far away would be really, really great to see that um, that magnet in the package with the other stuff they give you when you go home with a baby. Um, and, uh, you know, I met with a couple churches, uh, spoke to two this week, and, and they were really excited about the two on one services too, knowing that that was available. And uh, so is there for for MLEs, are there resources that we can access uh, to distribute within our community? There are. So we recently uh, redesigned, currently we redesigned our rack card. So we do have a, a rack card for distribution as well as a wallet size card. Uh, and we uh, in the past have had magnets, pen, uh, pens. Um, interestingly, in, interestingly, we have tattoos because uh, police officers were looking for a way to have, um, to give out the 211 number uh, mm -hmm. while they were patrolling, like doing like out patrolling and stuff. And so, um, yeah, so we're totally open to creative ideas of what would work in different communities. Uh, so I invite all those suggestions. I like the hospital suggestion. I don't think I received anything when I <laughs> gave birth, but um, yeah, those opportunities, uh, please send them my way. So. Yeah, for sure. It, it, they give you an envelope, like just, with, <laughs> I guess maybe I'm not, that much like younger but I know they did when we left we got this little envelope with all sorts of stuff in it and uh that a lot of it was useless but this would have been useful <laughs> I just have an idea in regards to our, our fire department right because a lot of our, our fire department attends calls of a lot and a lot of them are anxious lonely seniors and if, if maybe a firefighter, you know, would gain some more knowledge about 211 and they, and they possibly they do, many of them do, but maybe a way of them to deliver that package or that information, um, you know, as a first responder to, to seniors, right? Because I know some of them are seeing seniors a couple of times uh, within the year, right? And it's that anxious feeling. And I could imagine during um, COVID that just ex escalated so much more right so yeah I feel I think the the firefighters do a lot of good charity work and that would be something that they I think they would take on thank you for all those suggestions um how about I share with you our website and go through a search is that okay um so I'm going to share my screen again I'm just going to check the chat here but first before I switch over 
yeah, thank you for all those suggestions. Okay. Um, okay, I am sharing, um, this is our current website. However, we're really excited to launch our new website, which I will give you a sneak peek <laughs> at. So I'm just gonna switch over here. Um, so this is our new website, website we hope to launch in the next, oh, uh, I don't know, um, next couple weeks, hopefully, maybe two, three weeks. Um, and so I just wanted to show you this because the search function for our database um, is right on the home page. And someone can go in and search by postal code and keyword, or you can start by searching the categories. Um, also in the header carousel, there's you know, a link to sign up for that Safe Senior Strong Communities program. And I'll show you, that just takes you to a, a, an online form. So you just fill out the form. Um, as well as our shelter lists. Uh, and I wanted to show you this as well, but I think I'm gonna go to our current site um, just to make sure everything's we're still working on some connection with our database for this uh, for the new website, but uh, stay tuned because we're excited to launch that new site. Um, so this is the current site, and um, the shelter lists are listed right here as well as in the shelter list page. But I just wanted to pull it up. I noticed that there was a couple shelters in Langley, and so this list is updated twice a day at 11:30 in the morning and at 7:30 at night. Uh, and it lists available beds. Um, and so when I was looking through here, oh, this has been updated just um, uh, just a few minutes ago. So, um, you know, in this, uh, for this emergency shelter in Langley, there's three beds for females available. You know, it's pet friendly, accessible, and it provides you some information. Um, so this is a really uh, a valuable resource. Um, for many people. Um, there was also another shelter here I saw in Langley. So I'll just show you that. So this one, so this is a lineup shelter. Um, and so it's not showing the number today, but I believe when I saw it last time, there was about like 30 spaces uh, per night. And so um, I just wanted to show you this resource. It's um, a well-used resource on our website. Okay, so going back to the homepage. Um, the, on the homepage of our current site, this is how you search the database. Um, so this is that red book that then evolved into the online resources. And I pulled up a few scenarios. Um, so one, um, and actually this came up in the, the comments, was okay, so possible scenario is that you have a parent or partner with dementia and you were looking for resources and support. And so you could start by looking in the older adult category. Um, it's always better to use a postal code because you're gonna, the results come up at, um, based on geographical distance to what you're putting in. So, but I'm just gonna put Langley. I'm going to click dementia that makes a bunch of suggestions, topic suggestions. And then I'm going to search. And what's going to come up are many listings uh, for resources available and their distance uh, from the location specified. So, you know, I really recommend the database as um, a place to start if you're not comfortable calling. Um, you know, or if you like to do your own research or just see what's out there, it's a great place to start. But if you want um, to quickly find the res resource that best matches you, I always recommend calling uh, because our navigator, you know, they're they're so used to using the database and, um, and know the know many of the services available. But if you're more comfortable doing your own website search, this is what it's going to look like, and you can. Uh, click on resources that interest you. Um, okay, so 
you know, it's going to list a bunch. You can click in for more information. So this center in Langley, you can click for more information. It's going to list a bunch. It's going to tell you when it was last updated. Um, during COVID, you know, we always recommend contacting the program or service just because there might be changes um, that we haven't got into the database. So you can see here information about it. Just going to go back. And you can choose, okay, that one might be of interest and you can go down the list, looking and choosing and clicking, and then you can choose to download that list or to print out that list. So that's a super helpful option. Uh, I also want to show you, uh, let me see a good example here. Okay, so this dimension, sorry, this resource is in Surrey. Um, but I want to show you it's provided by Fraser Health. So we can also, if a lot of the records will have this service, it will list all the services available in that same organization. Um, and so this is Fraser Health. It's going to list all the other programs available from that provider. Okay. So another scenario I was looking into was, um, Okay, say you have a family member in Vancouver uh, and they are a hoarder. <laughs> and so um, you can put in a topic like hoarding. You can put in a postal code or postal code or city search. And here are two records that pop up. Okay, so this one's in Victoria, so we're probably not going to go to that one. This one is in Vancouver. And so you can click for more information um, and you can um, click to see all the services provided as well. Okay, maybe a third search. I'll just quickly do a third one. Would be, um, okay, so say you have a 15 year old who you're getting concerned about because they have, you notice that they're getting depressed. Maybe they're starting to hang out with a different crowd. You're not sure what's going on, but you're concerned. Maybe there's a, like a mental health issue going on. Or, and so you could search under youth. Um, you know, here it gets specific. So, you know, if you're worried about suicide, uh, drugs and alcohol, but in this scenario, you know, we're not sure yet. We're just concerned overall about mental health and wellness. Oh. <laughs> we can put that in. A lot of resources are going to come out, come up. So again, you would go through the resources and um, select what you find most useful and what you want to print or download to look at uh, in more detail. So I was looking at this earlier and you know, here's an online resource. So we mentioned a lot of online resources in addition to in-person and virtual resources. Um, so this little black book, it's an online guide to youth resources in Delta, Langley, Maple Ridge. So this one seems interesting. You know, and also another organization I was looking at this earlier that comes up quite a bit is the Encompass um, support Services Society. And so here, you know, you can see they're listed a few times, get curious about that organization, and then go into the service records and look at what's all available through that organization. So say I'm interested in that. And they also have a youth, bub, youth hub. That sounds interesting too. So I can go to print it or I can go to download and it goes to an Excel sheet. So I'm just going to stop sharing my screen now. Thank you so much. That was amazing the amount of resources that are on there it's just it truly incredible does anybody else have any questions or comments or anything like that i'd just like to extend my deep appreciation for coming here this evening and being with us and giving us an opportunity to learn and um 
find more access to supports in our community for our families and 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 how to help them when they're when they're in need and it's just an invaluable tool that you're presenting for us and so i thank you for that very much thank you for the opportunity yeah. and jenny um suzanne is on uh, the langley school board okay. and rosemary is on council in the city so definitely um, people who are are dealing with um you know all sorts of of different needs um in the hall of us do you have any questions or or comments or anything like that on your end no we good uh, no questions we just appreciate learning about this i'm 83 years old i've lived in first columbia for 82 years and this is the first I hear of this, so mm. it's really quite enlightening. We have friends who are senior single, uh, single seniors, and we'll sure let them know about this program. It certainly seems to be very wonderful. Thank you. That's great. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you for joining us. And um, anybody else? Uh, Andrew, do you want to wrap up? And well, yeah, I'd just like to, you know, thank everyone for coming and thank you, Jenny, for um, for you know explaining these, uh, you know, this this great resource uh, to us and, and to everyone. And the, um, you know, I'm I'm with Peter in that uh, in that you know I've learned a lot tonight and this evening just about what's out there and what's available. And, I'm definitely going to be making sure to promote uh, promote this as much as possible in our community. Thank you so much, everyone, for coming tonight. I uh, please spread the word on this resource, and thank you again, Jenny, for coming out tonight. And it was so wonderful to see all of you. And uh, we can't wait to host our next event. <laughs> so, thank you so much. Thank you. And I just want to extend an invitation to, um, if you had ideas on how to get 211 out, word out in your community, feel free to contact me at, at info at bc211.ca. So thank you very much. Have a good evening, everyone. Thank you. Have a great evening, everyone. Bye now.